Hey, what's happening, everybody? This is Robert, the Leather Cowboy, Muhammad, right here, Premier Leather Crafters in the Dirty South. Right down here where it's been raining, it's been storming, and now it's gotten back cold again. So guess what? It's a prime time for me to lock in and start part two of our do-it-yourself Sheridan, where we're gonna, where I'm going to show you guys how I do uh, everything from the artwork to the transferring to the saving of your money and your time. So I'm not going to beat around the bush or, or go really long-winded. I'm trying not to be long-winded like a Baptist preacher on this one. So we're going to get straight off into the uh, this video here. So what we left off on part one, you guys should be here. Where we where I we we started. If you was working with me yesterday, where we started doing the base print, uh, uh, to get our flow correct. Now from this point, um, now the way I do it, which somebody else might tell you completely different. So let's get off into. So I'm going to angle the camera and change the lighting real quick. Try not to take a whole lot of time, but. You guys will see uh, exactly where I go with the next step. So let's get right into it. I'm going to get the angle in this down, leaving that. Uh, there we go. I think you guys can see that. Let me get the light adjusted. So I'm hoping that you can follow this. Now, as you can already see how I have some stuff that's laid out. Now, even though I do draw my own flowers and my own uh, leaves, uh, have some different uh, daisy type flowers and stuff like that. But what I've done, as I was telling you guys yesterday, as we did with the circles, I also do my flowers the same way. So now what this, what this does is speeds up my time to where I don't have to sit and draw and erase and draw and erase. I have flowers of different sizes and uh, different shapes. So right now, what I'm going to do now is take this and even guys, you guys can see the two leaves of different, different shapes as well as the two designs on two two different flowers. So <clears throat> let's get right off into this. Now, if you guys are watching this or if you guys are looking at this and going along with the plan as uh, I did yesterday, this is what I want to show you guys. And I want to make sure this camera is going to stand still on this tripod. Uh, and it looked like it keeps wanting to roll over. So now... So I'm hoping this is going to stay. So what I'm going to do as as um, right here on our base stem going into. Now, if this is the buckle end of the belt and this is the uh, the uh, hole end. Well, let's just not even make that the hole. end. let's just say, look, we're going to work from left to right starting with our buckle in on this side. So now I chose one flower and what I do, I fit this flower and I try to get it as close to the flow of my baseline on the stem as possible. So, and sometimes you might have to angle that and turn that, but when I'm going now, another, again, another crafter may tell you something completely different. They may go in with their stickers first, or they may go in with their scrolls first. But I promise you, it's all going to make sense once you know where your flower is. And then it's easier for me to go ahead and draw with the flow. And that way I stay on flow with the uh, with my Sheridan design. Now, you'll see me do this a lot too when we start going off into the circles and doing different stuff like that. But I want to fit my flower into that. So I'm just going to trace this out. Now, again, this speed not only speeds up time, but it also gives me a better idea of exactly how I want to lay this out. And you're just tracing this flower over and over again. And uh, as I told you guys yesterday, put it on some poster board to where it will uh, 
stay stiff. It'll keep its shape. And you want to wrap that into the package and tape. Now, there we go with our first flower. Now we can start erasing some of the stuff that I don't want to need. Or I don't need. And I want to go back over that flower and bold it out. Bold my lines. And get it to where I really want it to be. And again, this is still in the drawing process. We're still drawing. Now, and I'm going to take those same elements from this one here. I'm going to come in off of that. I'm going to come in this way. Draw my folds. My folds in the flower. And I'm going to come right off of this one. I'm going to come off of this one, that one there, and then I'm going to come here. So, and there you have it. So now, our first flower is done. And I'm hoping that you guys can see this. Uh, our first flower is done. So now, we're going to go off into part two. Now, I would like to know where my where my leaves will fit. Now, I know that my leaf won't fit there because it's going, it's making me work too hard to bring it back into the flow of the uh, the pad, my base pattern. So all I'm going to do is bring this uh, down just a little bit. Actually, let's, let's get off into our first uh, stem. So I'm gonna turn this sideways and hopefully you guys can see this. But I'm coming right off of the bottom. And I'm going to use my base uh, line to give me a little flow. And we're just going to swoop this up a little bit. But I want to make it match. Now, the thing with Sheridan is, as long as you follow that flow, and we're just going to draw some little lines right here to go with our sticker. Uh, and the thing is now, the trick that I found is, it's a bunch of Y's. A little Y's with hooks on the end. And I'm gonna follow the flow of that. Now what I'm going to do from this point is come right back from this side with my flower. Well, no, I don't wanna do the flower just yet. So let's, let's stick with the Stick with the flow that we're going with already. Now, and you'll see a stalk start to develop, a stalk, so to speak. And you don't, I don't recommend that you draw too hard because you want this, uh, you will be doing a little bit of erasing from period of time to time. And you're just gonna come now. Once I get to the peak of this, I'm gonna curve this out this way and come right back. Come right back down to it this way. Now, here's the thing. And let me draw this right up in there like it's supposed to be. That's there, that's there, that's there. Now, what I what I like to do is, and I was telling you another crafter about this, I like to, I don't like to let my stems or my stickers, some people will call them stickers, stop. So I let them flow into the next one. So it's a continuous line there. Now what I'm gonna come back here to do, and there's that Y shape again, right off of my base stem. I'm gonna curve that back here. And I'm just gonna keep bringing this down this way. But you wanna stay along with your base line. Now eventually you're gonna erase that line 
but this is just setting us up to where and we now we're just going to start filling in and this is something i don't know why i like doing this putting that little bud right there but i just look like putting that little bud in mine and i'm curving it right back around into my next starting point here now this is a little bit rushed and I'm going to go back and clean this up later, but it's giving me my base point idea of where I want things to go. And I'm, I promise I'm going to show you guys this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase a little bit of that baseline and I'm going to come out with another one here and tie that into tie this into the top of my I'm going to put a bud right here as if it was another flower that can be budded off of that. And then I'm going to tie this in right here. So now, this is one thing that I want you guys to understand or what I want you guys to see. Doing uh, your stalk or your stem... It's kind of like uh, looking at a, a broccoli stalk. And sometimes you can draw your lines too long. You know, all you do is just go back and erase them. But it's kind of like if you're looking at broccoli, so to speak. You know how you, you have a, a, a broccoli bulb here, a broccoli bulb here, and it's a whole bunch of different broccoli bulbs at the top. But each one have their own individual stem. And each stem goes into that big tree trunk stock, st stalk uh, as it gets to the base. But if you really uh, observe or look at that, that, that broccoli stalk, you can see each individual stem going into the big one, the big base part. And this is what I found that makes Sheridan so cool to draw is because you have all of these stems and stickers and stuff like this that's flowing off into this one big base stalk. And then it's going to continuously flow throughout that of the belt. Now, what I can do if, I, if you so choose, you can turn right around and put another flower here. Now what this does, uh, it will also mask where your next line is going. It's going to mask that or where your next uh, start and stop point is. A flower does that. Nothing special about it. Nothing unique about it. Now, and here's something else, boys and girls. Don't be so afraid to go all the way to the edge of your belt. Now, one thing that I have also learned is um, don't put your borderlines, don't cut your borderlines just yet. Save those for last because I can run my borderline here and it doesn't cut into or interfere with my artwork. So if I wanted to, I can draw me a borderline or cut me a borderline here and I still can bevel and tool around that. Now, at some point you want to stop and start, but it still looks real cool when you put that beveling line last and you incorporate that into your artwork. Now, being that I put the flower there and this stalk is going into this, uh, I'm going to come back and erase that because my flower is going to cover that up. So nobody needs to see that. They just need to see it coming out of my flower. This is the only starting and stopping that you'll probably see in any of my artwork. Now, and I'm going to lay this flower right over the top of this bud 
And let me go back and darken this line up. And let me see, we're at the 18 minute mark now, but I want you guys to see this. And really, I want you to practice this. Because it there's nothing written in stone, and I'm going to just go back, and I'm going to draw my lines here. <clears throat> just the same as I did with the first one. And I'm going to put one here. One, two, three. And you just don't want to take too much of your center part out because now the cool part about that is, is I'm going to follow that up with a cedar stamp to give me that real authentic seed look from my stamps. Now, let me go back and start darkening this up so you guys can see how this is going to work. Oh, man. Just to give you an idea. Now, the one thing also is this is also going to help you guys know where to tool. Yes. Because that's the, another great thing about doing your own artwork. You will know where to tool, and it won't be any mistaken on your tooling. Because guess what? You are the artist. You know what, and I'm hoping you guys can see this, and I'll show you in a minute. And I'm going to come right back. Again, let me darken my uh, lines up in my flowers. This is, again, uh, just to give you an idea of how the cowboy does it. And then I'm going to come right back with the same thing again. And really, at, at my where my, my stem connects to my flower, I just like to put some little parentheses right there, uh, I, I guess you can say. And that gives me that little round bulb. Like, like this is the bulb where the bulb is just unrolling, and then boom, it comes right out in those little parentheses. And then I come right on back with my scroll again right on into my scroll and then guess what that's a little long so now I'm going to come right back out here and just hook that and follow the flow again now and I know some of you was like well okay what you going to do with the leaves cowboy you know you said something about this and you doing something about that Okay, so where I'm going to put my leaves, you can put your leaves anywhere. As long as it goes into the flow of your, uh, your, your artwork. So if I want to put the, uh, that's a little bit too far there. And that's a little bit too close to cover up some of the artwork. But you can actually put your leaves anywhere that you want to. Because as we know in, well, I think we know in the flower world, your leaves come first before your flower. That's what helps you to identify what type of flower it is. Now, I might be wrong on that. I didn't do too well in botany or whatever they call that science for flowers or gardening. Like I said, I know I have some artwork out there that probably have some oak leaves <laughs> with some daisies or something. And I'm just going to erase everything that's in the inside of that line. And what I'm going to do, that's going to make me alter this stem here to come on out just a little bit more because I want that to show. And then I might, 
uh, let's put one right there like that. Kind of like a little duck head a little bit. And I, I, I notice that's something else that I do a lot into my artwork as well. I do a little, I don't know where I'd be getting this stuff at, but hey, it's all into the mind of the person that's doing the drawing. And again, it's not, I mean, really nothing set in stone about who can do what and who can say what. And somebody can say, oh man, that ain't, that ain't sharing the design and woo, 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 woo. But hey, when you're making money, hey, do what you do, partner. Okay. And I think I'm going to put just a little bit of a uh, loop right there. And just to tie that in. Just to fill that space right there. And then I'm going to go ahead and draw my, this is my stem coming from my veins. And then I'm going to tie that into my stalk. Or tie that into. I'm going to tie it in. So that was there. And that's the one thing. You don't want to erase too much because it'll cause you to lose your flow. I'm going to draw my stems a little long so they'll tie in. And I want my bottom stem to be longest because guess what? I'm going to tie me another scroll or another sticker right there. I want that to be a little long. So now you can, I could if I really wanted to, run that right up to the bottom of that leaf right there and then bring it down. And I'm just making it full. That's all that I'm doing is making it full. And then I want you guys to see this because it's, it's the same thing that I told you earlier. Here's another one of those Y shapes. You see that Y? That's all that it is. And if you look at Sheridan, you can see where the Ys are, are in this. I think that I'm going to fill that space in a little bit too. Put in something right there. Just to fill that space. Yeah, just to fill that space in. And then I'm coming right back. with that long line. There's that Y again, that Y shape. I'm tying that in. And then I'll put another Y right there just to fill, fill this part in so it doesn't look so empty. And I think I'm gonna put me like a pre pre-developing flower here. And I'm gonna tie that in. I'm just gonna fill that space in right there with just a little a little line board. I got too much shading right there, so I'm just gonna want to draw that be a single line. And then I'm just gonna fill this in with a little hidden stem right there. Just to fill that space in. And I'm going to do the same thing here. Tie another little small sticker here. And then I'm going to curve this in with another future bud right there. And it's all those circles with no flat spots. Here, here, here we go again, another Y, but instead of just dropping my Y off, I'm gonna curve this Y all the way around to connect and make a circle so I can fill in that space. And then I'm just going to bring that line down into the next one. And you can even, even if you wanted to, you can, 
<clears throat> make this kind of like a single leaf flower opening. And let's see, we're just going to draw like a little M and a little tip right there. And instead of bringing this line down all the way, I'm going to curve this line back this way. There we go. And I'm going to run this one up and make it stop so I can curve that that way. And round that back off. I don't like the way that didn't round that off a little bit. Now, here we go. I'm just going to go back and darken these up. Just so you guys know, and you saw it right here. You guys saw it right here. And we were probably at what the 26 minute. And I tried to, I told you guys I wasn't gonna keep you that long. And then just gonna fill in my lines. And this is not even cleaned up. Generally, I wouldn't do any of these bone lines. You do these bold lines right before you get ready to transfer so you you can see it in your film or your transfer film. There we have it. Just like that. So, and, and you can use any of your, fl your flowers. See, I, I could have come back and put, I could have flipped this flower over and ran this flower. Actually, I think I will do that, is to uh, bring this down and run this flower up in here if I hadn't already drawn it so bold. <laughs> but you can, and the great part about the, the poster board Doing these on the poster board, you can flip these left or right. So if if I wanted my my flower my my leaves to go to the left, I'll, I'll draw it like I uh, uh like I'm seeing it. But if I wanted to go to the right, all I got to do is flip it over. Once you flip it over, then my leaf can go to the right. Then the same thing about your flowers. If I wanted this flower to go over, and I know it's a lot more right-handed people out there than it is left-handed people, so, so you might draw from right to left. But either way it goes, if you have your flowers and your leaves already pre-done, all you do is just turn it over, and you can work that way, the same identical way. But there is nothing hard about it. The hardest part is really one dropping the word can't from your vocabulary because like I told you guys yesterday I couldn't draw prior to September of last year that was it and to get for me to get to this point and yeah I do cheat a little bit by uh having some pre-drawn flowers and all that kind of stuff and but these are my flowers that I drew so I can use these over and over again, and it doesn't hurt anybody. It's not something, and then even if even if I wanted to now, just to show you guys real quick how I can draw my own flowers, <laughs> it's, it's all circles. It's all circles. So if you got a oval shape here, and let's just say, let me make this a little bit cleaner, and, and it's all practice. 
The more you practice, the muscle memory. Uh, I wanted to draw that up a little bit so I can show you guys. And see, I love angel bells too. I love angel bells. One, my mother loves angel bells. And then we're going to come back with all those, all those uh, circles. I mean, just those curves, those that S-shaped pattern, no flat spots. And then I'll draw me another one, another circle down here. And then I'll start formulating my leaves and drawing leaves here. And it's all in how you do it. All it's all practice, boys and girls. Then you're just going back cleaning it up. You're just going back cleaning it up. That's it. It doesn't have to be perfect. But it gives you more confidence when you know you can draw your own stuff. And I don't know if these are the type of leaves that go on an angel bell, but then if I want to do this right here, give my angel bell a little character. Boom! Come back like that and fill it in. And then if I want to do a little split in the leaves or like that, you know, this is all mine. And then I come back with some other little things, whatever those little things that stick out of them, you know. And you can get inspiration. Now, when Dee Dee was teaching me to do this, Dee Dee told me to, she gets inspiration just from walking around her yard. And I think, see, let me put another one right here and another one right there just to fill this in so somebody can think that because the eye will tell them that, hey, those are leaves going all the way around that thing. And so, you know, boom, it makes it look like leaves are going all around that. And then I'll come down here with my parentheses again. And whoop, there's that Y shape again. There's that Y shape. So yeah, you can pre-draw all of these. Let me see it so you guys can see that. See, you can pre-draw any of this stuff, put it on your poster board, package tape it to where it'll stay and it'll last. And then when you get sit ready to get down to do your, your artwork, then boom. There it is. Buckle in and you just flow. Now, and if you want to fill these spaces in, you can just make it a little bit bigger or do something else right there to fill that space. And, you know, do what you do. Well, not do what you do.